years ago, I had the honor of getting a call from my manager telling me that uh, Maurice White wanted me and uh, you know my partners, DeMonte and George, to, first of all, Maurice White is the founder, was, we just lost him last year, uh, the founder of Earth, Wind and Fire. We lost Maurice because of uh, uh, degenerative uh, muscular disease. And it was, it had a really good hold on him 10 years ago. Um, but he was still moving around and talking and he was even getting in the studio and singing sometimes. And they were working on a project and he, um, he asked for a meeting. You know, it was just like amazing to go to his studio, have Maurice come in. So these are my idols, man. We're talking earth, wind and fire. And I'm an R&B dude. And I, I grew up listening to those horn arrangements and the vocals that Philip would do and the songs that Maurice would arrange and just like, that was like the blueprint of what R&B, you know, could be. And to have these cats sit down with me and say these words, Maurice told me, he was like, you know what, man? His voice was really soft at that point. It was like, I've been watching you for years. You know, we, we want you to, we want you to write a little something for us. So that was a, that was a dream come true. Um, being in the studio, you know, me and my partners, we wrote a few things and having Verdine come in and play the bass. And then we had like a vague idea of like what, what the horns would be. And the only, we would make like a skeleton idea of what we thought the horns would be and basically say, you know, real earth, wind and fire-ish right here. We call up Jerry Hay who produced, uh, who arranged all those crazy horns on, you know, all those, uh, or most of those horns on the Earth, Wind & Fire records. And um, it was just like a dream come true, man. Just it, the best affirming session of, uh, you know, my career. Having your idols look to you to write some stuff and to produce them is just, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Maurice was truly basically invented the concept of the album R&B, you know, where you, you buy an, al an R&B album, not for a single or even for two or three songs, but you put that Earth, Wind & Fire record on and it's an experience from start to finish. And uh, it was quite an honor, you know, to be in the studio with him. I think one of the things that I learned from that session was I think as an artist, there's kind of like this I mean, I think a lot of artists probably feel this. The artists, we can be really insecure about our stuff. You know, oftentimes when you're in the studio, you're in a bubble. Uh, when you're writing and when you're producing, I'm one of those cats where I don't like a lot of people in the studio, except like my partner, like either my cousin or DeMonte and the people who I generally work with because I don't know, it just works for me. So I'm often creating in a bubble. So I never know what's hot or what ain't hot. I don't know, I never know like what's a single or what's like an album joint because whenever I start working on a new song, if it doesn't give me goosebumps right away, I'm like, all right, this probably ain't the joint, but let's, you know, let's see where this goes. So all that to say, there's like some, there's a lot of insecurity um, just being um, an artist. What I learned from working with Earth, Wind & Fire was don't let that insecurity dampen you or lie to you or make you second guess yourself. I'm sitting up here in the studio with Philip Bailey and Earth, Wind & Fire because they call me. So shoot, that's all the affirmation I needed. So from that session with Earth, Wind & Fire, one of the biggest things I learned is um, I don't really have to second guess myself and trust that inner barometer I have. Um, because, yo, I'm sitting here with Maurice White, Philip Bailey, Verdine, Earth, Wind & Fire, like asking for my creative input. So um, it was a very affirming point in my career. He was supposed to produce my, like half of my Love, Love uh, for Sale album, but he passed away. So I got a chance to watch him just create, you know, and he just made it look so simple and easy. My theme was 80s and 90s, like, everybody know that's me. That's why even going back to the breaks, to have the opportunity to be there, 
and to be this age and to be in the 90s is kind of dope. You know, I wanted to be there with Faith Evans and all of them. You know what I'm saying? Lil' Kim, LL with the boys, the men, hey, lover, you know what I'm saying? Like, all that. We had a rep with us and said, listen, this is what you do. This has happened several times. What we need you to say is they smoke weed. That's all I see is weed movies from Jamaica. This is where I thought it was going to go down. That's, you know, that's your spill. You thought it was legal over here. You know, being in entertainment or music, you just have to be ready for the roller coaster. It's inconsistent and you never know what will catch on. And sometimes it's the most personal songs that don't really fit any formula that people gravitate towards. 